this lesson, we're going to take a look at breaking glass. So the truck has many different glass parts. Uh, of course, all of the windows, and it's got the rear window, and then the front windshield. We're going to mainly look here at the front windshield. Okay, the other pieces there are essentially going to be the same thing. But uh, I've imported my front windshield, and you can see I've already kind of just added some cuts to it, basically just kind of pre-scoring it. Now, you can get really elaborate with this, but we always want to make sure that we're not going crazy with the amount of geometry here. End cloth is not the tool for something like that. If we were to break this up and shatter it into, you know, the, the 10,000 pieces that we might get from, from a real-world object, we're, we're probably going to want to go with a different type of solver for that. Okay, but for end cloth, um, we're just going to break it up, and we can make, you know, some kind of cool little, you know, spider web pattern in here. Uh, but again, keep that geometry kind of low. We don't want to go nuts with it. Okay, so that's kind of pre-scored, and my first step here is to convert it over to end cloth. Okay, and in my attribute editor, we're going to assign a preset to it, and I'm going to start with that same car metal preset. Now, of course, glass is different than metal, but we'll make just a few modifications here. So we'll choose my car metal preset and choose replace. Okay, and uh, my first step here is to drop that self-collide with scale down to 1. Um, I don't want 5. That's going to really kind of disrupt my geometry there. So we want to keep that at a good level. In fact, let's check the overall thickness and make sure that it isn't way outside of the bounds. And it's not. It looks pretty good. Next thing I want to do is let's just scroll down here and double check. Uh, we have our resistances. Those are good. And our restitution angle, that's fine. We're going to be breaking this up into all individual quads. So this restitution angle per quad isn't going to play a huge role. I will want to get rid of the motion drag. We need to take that out because the motion drag although it brings it along, it's not going to allow it to fall from its position. So we want this glass to actually shatter okay, uh, and fall to the ground. If it motion drag is on, it's not going to allow it to do that very well. So I want that motion drag off. And with that, we also want to turn that solver gravity back on. Okay, and also let's lower the mass. Let's bring that to a value of 5. Okay, and the very last thing I'm going to do here, uh, let's go back up and take the collision layer, and I'm going to set this to 1. Okay, I'm doing this because I've already solved for the truck body and for the hood and all those other pieces and parts there. I don't want the glass to dictate to them what they should be doing. They need to be following the cache file that's already assigned to them. Okay, so by assigning it to a collision layer of one, my truck body and all the other pieces and parts are going to ignore it. Okay, so they're not going to take on any influence from the windshield whatsoever. And that's perfect. That's exactly what I'm after here. Okay, and let's go in and make this a child, just like we did before. Okay, and now that's a child of our locator, and that's going to help, again, just kind of carry it along, but without that motion drag. All right, and next, we want to add a constraint. Now, we're not going to add the point to surface. This time, we're going to add a weld constraint. So the weld constraint works based upon edges. So I'm going to select those edges there. And it really wants border edges. Okay? It doesn't have to be, but in this case, it works out because we do have border edges. And really, what it ideally wants is for every vert to match the vert that we're attaching it to. 
okay but we can clearly see that we do not have the same amount of geometry okay and you'll see what happens here so I've got both of those selected and we'll choose end constraint weld adjacent borders okay now I get a ton let's go to wireframe here and we can see it a little bit better okay I get a bunch of extra points that it's welding to this is actually going to be too much and it will cause some significant problems I'm gonna leave it there just for right now and we'll come back to it so let's continue and I'll select the entire surface here and let's go back to our edges I'm gonna select that border again but then I'm gonna convert my selection to vertices Okay, and hold shift and draw a big marquee around just to select all of my interior verts there. And now I want to add a terrible surface constraint. Okay, this guy right here. Okay, and that will add some history to my object. And you can see that it's uh, separating it, it's dividing it. Okay, and that's okay. We don't really care about that. But what that's done is it's broken up every face into its own separate object, essentially. Okay, still contained under the same node. Okay, but that will allow this to fall apart into a bunch of little pieces. Okay, and let's see what we've got going on here so far. So I'm going to make sure that we're following my cache file, and it looks like we are. Okay, and let's just hit play. Okay, and that immediately explodes on us. Not what we're looking for, so let's take it back to one. And I want to go to that first constraint that I added, and that's my weld, uh, my border constraint. Okay, this guy right here. Okay, and let's change the maximum distance. And this is the distance that it's looking out for other vertices. Okay? And that's where it's going to be adding those extra con constraints. When we have too many, because it's a weld constraint, what it's doing is it's actually welding those points back together. So it's collapsing a lot of these vertices. So I'm going to take this and set this to a maximum distance of, we'll drop that way down there, and set it to a maximum distance of 1. Okay. Might have to go just a little bit lower here. Let's try 0 0.01. And we'll hit play. Okay, now notice the border looks a lot better, and now just the interior is kind of falling apart on us. So I'm going to take that back, and let's just make sure the rest of our attributes here are looking pretty good. Uh, I'm going to make this a lot stronger. So I'm going to take my strength and my tangent strength out to 200, and the reason for that is that the truck is going to be flipping in the air. It's going to need a strong constraint. We don't want this thing to break until it has a really heavy impact. The glue strength we're going to take down to point 0.1, and that will allow it to break when it does have that impact. Okay, but we're also going to turn on bend. Now, bend only works with edge-to-edge -edge type connections here, and the weld does uh, works ba or is, is based upon that. So that this will allow this constraint to bend a little bit. And that's good because we don't want it breaking under, you know, just slight deviations in our surface. I'm going to give it a bend strength of 100. Okay, and a bending break angle of 60. Okay, and scroll down. And the last thing I want to do is I'm going to check exclude collisions. So that way it will only work on the collisions from the vertices that are in the constraint and not looking out at the other surface there. So it's avoiding this, this double collision kind of an effect. All right, and now let's switch over to our terrible surface constraint. Okay, and now this is actually keeping that surface together. Okay, and let's do pretty much the same thing here. We're going to increase our strength and our tangent strength. 
We're going to keep that glue strength right where it's at. Okay, and let's change the bend strength to 100. And we'll give it a break angle of, let's try 30. Okay, and we also, again, want to turn off exclude collisions. And we'll hit play. All right, and now it's not completely falling apart. It's holding together a little bit better, actually quite a bit better. Okay, and we will see just a little bit of ripple action uh, as it drops through the air here, but it should, based upon our bending, it should kind of bounce back into place. If it doesn't, we want to go back in, adjust those parameters, make them a little bit stronger, possibly even a little bit weaker. Okay, and we can see that that weld is, is starting to pull apart, but it will probably come back together. I may have to add some extra points to it. Okay, let's just stop that right there. And I think we'll go in. And we'll probably make a few more uh, adjustments to those parameters just to fine tune it. Okay, let's wrap it up right there and we'll come back and take a look at our finished piece. So this is a look at breaking glass.